Jessica there. Let's send it up inside the cage for our official introductions. Here's ring announcer Don Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we come to you live from the Penticton Trade and Convention Center here in beautiful Penticton, BC for Battlefield Fight League 17 Heat Wave. This fight will be three five-minute rounds in our BFL welterweight division. This fight is sponsored by Knuckle Apparel. Knuckle up with Knuckle Apparel, your clothing line of the future. Introducing first the man fighting out of the blue corner. This man stands five foot 11 inches tall, weighing in at 169.5 pounds, with a record of two wins and no losses. Fighting out of Team Red Dragon in Vancouver, British Columbia. Please welcome Yannick Kage. His opponent, the man fighting out of the red corner, this man stands 5 foot 11 inches tall yesterday, weighed in at 169.5 pounds, with a record of two wins and three losses, fighting out of Bulldog Fight Team in Washington. Please welcome Mark Kobe. And the cage door closes to referee in charge, Mr. Tony Williamson. All right, there you see Mark Doby will classify him. Both guys are wearing black and white uh, as far as shorts go. We'll say it's uh, Doby with the FOMO and uh, his opponent, Yannick, Yannick Perre. Well, no FOMO. No mo. <laughs> All right, here we go. Round number one scheduled for three five-minute rounds, and it's a nice push kick to start things off for Yannick Perre. Good push kick. I, guys don't start with that. Super jab. Oh, right hand from Perre just misses. Oh, it doesn't look like any of these guys have taken a shot anywhere in their minds right now. A couple of nice lower leg kicks from Perre. Both guys swinging the right foot. High kick misses from Doby. It's a snappy high kick too from Doby. Push kick again. A nice jab from Doby. Pushes Paré back. Paré winds in and uh, I think he, he might have caught one, but he, he landed one as well. Nice jab again from Doby. Yeah, Perez is committed to the body right now. It's going to be interesting to see him mix it up. Oh, nice couple of kicks. <laughs> Punches uh, missed from Perez. You know, Gal set you up to the head by starting with the body there. The, guy, the problem guys always run into is you forget to keep going back to the body. Right across from Perez just glances the left temple of Mark Doby. Scrambly punching exchanges here with these guys try to figure each other out a bit. And you can really see the difference between the pros and the amateurs. These guys, they know what they're doing. The techniques are sharper. We're a minute and a half in here. Round number one scheduled once again for three five minute rounds. And you know, it's astonishing when you actually recognize and see some good footwork. Mm, nice push kick again for Perrin. Spinning oh. back fist misses, walks oh. right into a jab from Doby. It's <laughs> danger, if you miss, you better be ready for something coming back down the, the pipe at you. Oh, big right latch from Perret, and that hurt Doby momentarily. Doby's a bit dazed here. Ray not going after him, though, so. That jab is really working for Mark Doby as we approach the halfway point of round number one. He just misses with a right. Let's get some, like, I call them scrambly exchanges here. Nice left again from Doby. Looks to catch the leg, can't do it. Parade just wants to Kobe turn this into a brawl. Kobe just stood against the cage and biting him in there. He's lucky he got out of that. Very crisp left jab from Mark Kobe, and that's working for him here in round number one. Yeah, that's a crazy thing, you know, a snappy, crisp jab is, it's like genetic. Oh, he walks in with the right that time. And that lands, and that may have stunned Perret just a little bit. He did saw him shake it off a little bit there. I think he was he was so used to seeing that left jab, he was surprised when uh, Doby started with that right cross. Well, there's a shot that lands from both fighters. He's just throwing, that's a third back fist in the last 10 seconds by Perret. Perret, I think, 
just getting a little bit dazed here. I think this jab is starting to work. Final minute and a half here, round number one, and Gray's starting to breathe through that mouth as the push kick doesn't land, but two stiff jabs from Dobie, they land. Another spinning back kiss, you know. When you see guys starting to do that this early in a fight, you gotta think of, you know, what's their game plan been going into this? Well, you, you can see now, uh, I think Perez getting tired here. That last spinning back fist was quite slow, a lot slower than the other ones, and uh, this could be the telltale sign of the way this fight's gonna go. And that's it, you see that snapping jab, still got a ton of mustard on it from Dobie. Dobie's still content to look for that combination, to pick his spots here. Oh. Another big shot landing from Dobie. Blood's starting to come from the nose of Perez. You gotta look at Dobie's movement too. I mean, this is a guy, this is an experienced striker here. He's fatigued right now, he's starting to get tired, but he's still, his footwork is still good. He's still, you know, popping in and out. He can stand moving, showing angles. Fantastic striking right now. Yeah, and this could be trouble for Perret. No. No, he, uh, it, it, it looked like, it looked like it was trouble, but now he takes his back, doesn't have a hook in, he's looking to get the hooks in. He's got he one hook in. Does. Final 15 He's seconds here. Right now. Let's try it. Perez. Good wrist control from Pere. Looks like he might get out of this round. Uh, he's fighting to protect that neck, but it's only a matter of time at this point. Saved by the bell or what? Oh, he's and there you go. We're going to go see a round at number two. Pere surviving, and he slaps the hand of uh, Mark Doby, but that was really Mark Doby's round. We're set to go here, round number three, as we look at Yannick Perre. He's got to find a way in. Got to look to change it up a little bit against Mark Dobie, who pretty much had his way in that first round. Perre, Perre a little bit fresher, tries that push kick, and uh, I think there was maybe, uh, they were wondering if uh, low blow was landed, but uh, they continue on here. Instead of spinning, spinning back fist, it was an attempt at a spinning back kick. I think it was a combo there. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely breaking all stops. There's the front kick again. You know, that was, it looked to be the foundation of his strategy moving in, moved away from it. Oh, there's oh. a spinning back fist that lands. <laughs> Are we just talking about how ineffective that was? And right there, that catches Doby to the chin. <laughs> that wasn't a bad one. Oh, nice left from uh, Pere, answered by a left from Doby. Oh, big right hand, and Pere is dead. He goes down and that's it, the fight is over. Tony Williamson calls it. Big leg, right hand from Mark Doby. It, it, it had uh, Yannick, uh, uh, Yannick Pere, rather, dazed on his feet, and you just knew that was the end of the fight, David. <laughs> Absolutely. Mark Doby, though, this is a, it all started with this jab. It was one twos and one two threes the entire first round. It stayed, it stayed. He kept throwing them, and eventually, your opponent makes a mistake, you land that right. The three landed, and boom, lights out. Amazing. Absolutely, and we saw this a little bit in the prelim fights. This is what conditioning will do. When you've got one fighter that is in far superior condition, um, and we saw it about halfway through round number one, Pere had his mouth open, he was breathing through his mouth, and uh, he started taking some uh, jabs, and uh, that set up that big right hand and I believe we're going to call it a TKO. But for the official announcement, let us send it inside if our uh, referees and everybody is ready. Once again, here is ring announcer Don Anders. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tony Williamson calls a stop to this fight. 52 seconds of the second round for your winner by TKO, Mark Dobie!